Good morning and happy Father's Day to all those father figures out there. And welcome to all of you who have come to join us in worship. May today be a day where you find your God, where you find a place to open your heart and your mind up and allow God to work in and through you. Above all, may you know that whenever you come into this presence, you are loved and cared for. Welcome. <clears throat> Please join me in our opening hymn, We Are Your People. As we come together this morning, let us join in our call to worship. All that we see is a gift from God. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts you have created. Each moment in time we share is a gift from God. Thank you, Lord, for the moments you have created. Look to your God with praise and thanksgiving for all you have received. It is God who gives and God who calls us here. Come, let us worship our wonderful God. Let us shout praises to our God for calling us together and watching our days. Let us join in our unison invocation. Creator, you have made all that we know from the smallest of plants to the largest of mountains, the early dew at sunrise with the singing of the birds, the noonday heat and the work you give us to do, the breeze at sunset as the day draws to a close, the songs of the crickets and the cool nighttime air. In all our moments, we find your hand and your presence at work. Be with us now in this time of praise and worship. Work on our hearts to make them yours. Grant us your wisdom to discern your call for our days. We pray all of this as your holy family. Amen. 
as we celebrate this day and honor the fathers in our lives, let us come together in prayer for the fathers who have been and the fathers to come. Holy One, we bring prayers and praise to you in honor of those we call our fathers, those people who, by blood or by choice, have stepped into our lives and answered your call to help guide and lead us in your holy example. Thank you, God, for the gifts they have been. They come in all shapes and sizes, strengths and weaknesses, abilities and growing edges. Help us, Lord, to hold them up without judging them. Help us to grow with them while honoring their sacrifices. Some have been great examples of what to be, while others have shown us what ways to avoid. They are all just like us, human, trying to find their way in all the circumstances life throws at us. Help them, holy example, to find their way when they are lost and be strong when they feel frail. Help us to hold them up in prayer wherever they are on this journey with you. It is easy for them to judge themselves as poor and weak, to see every mistake they have made and every pitfall they have fallen into. Help us to show them where you have been with them, holding them up in prayer and letting them see the good they have done. You have left us all an amazing example of how to live. Many of them have done their best to see that and mimic your example to the best of their abilities. Thank you, God, for the gifts of our fathers. May we forever hold up what is good about them, love them even when they falter, and see them for what they are, gifts from you. Amen.
Our first scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses 24 through 31. Hear the words of our God. No, there's not something wrong with your screen. You haven't gotten the wrong video or clicked on the wrong thing. It's just that it happens to be about 2 o'clock on Thursday morning, and although I've already got the service taped and ready to go and partially edited. The sermon's taken a different turn. And rather than coming to you with the mantle of pastor this morning, I thought I would come to you just as a fellow Christian to give you a little bit of my story and why I follow Christ. So let me first give you the scripture for this morning, and we will talk more about it. So from the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses 24 through 31, and 32 through 39, we hear the following. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs on your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others... I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The reading of God's word. You'll notice that I have on everyday clothes. In fact, in honor of Father's Day, I'm wearing one of my favorite Father's Day gifts. And if you can't read it, it says, some people call me pastor. The most important ones call me dad. But before we get to what that's all about, you're going to need a little backstory. You're going to need to know why I follow God and Christ the way I do. How I came to where I'm at. 
So rather early on in life, my late teens and early 20s, I discovered I was a stark raving mad alcoholic. Didn't want to admit to it. Didn't want to deal with it. And yet, by the grace of God, the love of my parents, and my family, I found redemption. I found grace and forgiveness in the oddest of places. And it was all blessings that God was placing within my life. Now, not all of them came in the forms that I expected. Oftentimes they came to me through people that I didn't know very well. Sometimes from people I didn't care for very much. But in the process, a faith began to grow. And what I learned in that was that the greatest gift I could give back was to be like God. Not be God, but to try to mimic to the best of my abilities what God was doing in my life for others. Which led me down a long road. The blessings continued as I got healthier. I got married, and I had two wonderful children. And I can remember holding my son for the first time and thinking to myself, what have I done? I have no idea what to do with this little life that I've created. and being completely and utterly scared, but also completely and utterly in awe and in love. When my daughter came along, I remember holding her, having many of the same feelings, but being more confident about what I was going to do, but also realizing how much God was blessing me with this love I was finding in these tiny children. But it meant I was going to have to step up. It meant I was going to have to be a good father. And I wanted nothing more. Now you'll notice in the scripture, it talked about nothing that's secret will remain that way, that secrets will become known, that what is done in the dark will come to the light. And over this process, I saw that happening again and again. Things that I thought were in my past and I could hide from had to be dealt with. I had to make amends. And each time I found God's grace and forgiveness through the people I was dealing with. Now, it's not like everything went away. I suddenly felt a call to the pastorship and answered. And a lot of the things I thought I was doing right, I found I wasn't doing so well. I took the second half of the scripture a little too seriously. It caused a failed marriage. I had to start dealing with my end of that. It took me years to rebuild the relationship I should have had with my children to start with. But I was gone all the time. I wasn't there the way I should have been. And in time, it's gotten better. And I learned again through other people about God's grace and forgiveness. And it caused even more love on my part for God. And this idea that I wanted to be the best Christian I could be, to be this example of hope and light for other people. And every day as I walk through this world doing that job, I'm reminded just how much that is needed in this world.
not just as a pastor, but as a Christian, as someone who has fallen the grace of God, not because of the job I do, but because of what God has blessed me with. There is so much that we overlook and oftentimes take for granted that God has blessed us with. The struggles that we go through and the times that we go through often build up wonderful relationships and teach us things that we don't even realize we're learning. So what are some of the things I've learned over the years? One, that I have value. That even with all the mistakes I've made, God has counted every hair on my head and has a calling for my life. Again, for me, that's a pastor. But there's a lot of other places in which I'm called. I'm called to be a father. I'm called to be a son. I'm called to be a husband. And having to learn through faith in this faith community and family that I've become a part of has changed my world. And each step of the way, I become more and more grateful for what God has done in my world. Because even after all of my failings as a husband in my first marriage, in the way in which I stumbled with my children from my first marriage, trying to figure out how to be a good dad and a pastor and juggle all of it at the same time. What I've learned is God was still watching out for me. Suddenly I'm getting remarried and having more children. And those two have again been a blessing to my world. Every day I learn something new from those two children. Two little boys who have imaginations that are abounding, who try my patience at every turn, and yet come up and show me unconditional love. I've learned to communicate in new ways with my wife. And Tony supports the world in which we live and the faith that we have in ways that I can't begin to thank God for. Every step of the way, there has been a blessing. There has been something that God has done to make sure I learn and I find a new way to serve, that I take all of the calls on my life seriously, that the love that I've been shown goes back out to those God has blessed me with. When we look at our lives as Christians, how amazing it would be if we looked on every one of God's children and saw them as blessings and gifts. How wonderful it would be if we saw past their shortcomings and mimicked the grace and forgiveness God has for us. Or we looked at how much we have and shared with others in our abundance. These are what we're called to as Christians. And the blessings that come back are phenomenal. Just amazing. I've never been more blessed than I am now. I've got two adult children that I couldn't be more proud of, who despite everything I've done, have turned out to be wonderful adults. I have two small children that I am now molding with a wife who loves me, who supports me, 
who calls me back to the fact that I have a family and those that I love that I have to be a part of their lives as well. It's not enough to just say I'm Christian, but to live it. Not because I'm a pastor, but because of what God has done in my life. I've chosen to answer this call because that's where I feel God was calling me. But first and foremost, he's called me to a Christian family. And then to the larger family of this particular congregation. And even further out to my fellow Christians throughout the country and the world. But it takes realizing that not everything is going to be a cakewalk. The scripture is even clear about family. And the fact that we're not always going to get along. We won't see eye to eye. There are going to be times we love one another and times we want to be at each other's throats. Whether it's our nuclear family or our church family. But I do it out of love for God. Out of gratitude for what God has done in my world. There's no greater blessing than realizing how much God has given you. Taking stock of it and realizing just where God has been a part of your life and walked with you. How many people God has put in your world. When I sit and think of all the men who have stepped up and taught me what it meant, from my father to teachers that I've had, to fellow Christians, to a gentleman who used to play harmonica in the first church that I was in, was there every Sunday. Would sit and play harmonica and play along with every hymn. To the people who have just stopped and prayed. And even to those who have graced my path, asking for help and allowing me to grow as Christians. The love God shows us isn't necessarily always warm and fuzzy. Sometimes it's in allowing us to fall allowing us to learn by our mistakes. Sometimes it's in the losses that we have. Many times, though, it's in the tiny, small moments that you can't have but for the grace of God. When I look at a child and I see the love that it gives, not seeing color, not seeing scars, size, but just seeing a person, I find hope. When I look out at a congregation and see people that are praying for others and care, those who as soon as they find out someone is hurting, are asking how they can help. When I look out and I see so many people willing to pick up their cross, to reach out to God, to show the world what it means to have the love and hope that God brought us through Jesus Christ. I can't help but be filled with the same hope. I have seen things in ministry that have turned my stomach and then turned around a second later 
and watched people do things that have warmed my heart in ways I can't possibly imagine. And all of it, in everything that has happened, God has given me reasons to smile, to laugh, to find a reason to say thank you from the bottom of my heart and to be utterly amazed by what God can do through us as human beings. We all have our shortcomings. None of us is like the master. None of us will ever be the master. But we all have wonderful growing edges that allow us to let people see how God is working in our world. All of us have gifts that we can give that cost us absolutely nothing but the sacrifice of love. I can't help but speak about God in great terms. I could be mad at God for everything that's happened in my world. But then to look at how I was blessed after all of the choices I've made? No. No, God has been there the entire time. He took a 22-year-old man and drug him out of the dregs of alcoholism. Blessed him with a family that has loved him through seminary, through ministry, who have taught him patience, kindness, what it means to love somebody for who they are and not who they could be. Not what they could do for you. I will leave you with this this morning. As you look at your life, stop counting your failures. Count them as growing edges, learn from them, move forward. Give thanks to God for the blessings God gives you despite the things that have happened in your world and the things you have done suddenly become so much less important. God graces you, forgives you, redeems you, calls you his child. And in return, we're just asked to give that same type of example back. May you be blessed. May you know the spirit of Christ in every moment. And when it's gone and you can't find it, may God set somebody in your life that reminds you of the beautiful blessings. Simply to obey the law of showing what God does and mimicking God to the world to the best of your ability is the greatest thanks you could possibly give. I would ask now that you would join me in a prayer. Holy and gracious God, I just give you thanks for all of the blessings that are out there today. I give you thanks for the people who step up in other people's lives, not because they have to, but because they want to out of gratefulness. Lord, for all those who are hurting, place us in their lives that they could know your hope and love in all that they do. 
Help them find your forgiveness through the forgiveness that we give. Help them find their redemption as they come and be a part of your family. Whether that's here in another congregation or simply in whatever part of the world they are living right now. Help them to find their worth and know that they are worth so much more than they could possibly imagine. And when everything is said and done, help all of us, Lord, to see you at work in and through us, changing us, that we could shout out, Amen. Because of what you have done in our world. This I pray by the grace that you have shown me, by the love you have given me, and by the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus the Christ, that I may know all of this because of him. Amen. God bless you all. To all the fathers, may you have a wonderful Father's Day. And may you see the blessings that you have brought into this world. Go in peace.
let us join in the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let us join in our closing hymn, How Can I Say Thank? Friends, we are so glad that you were able to join us this morning. We hope that through all that you've witnessed here and heard from your time in worship with us, you would find wonderful grace and love in the things that you need as you sit in God's presence. May your week be filled with joy and with love, grace and forgiveness. And if you are able to help us out today, we'd ask that you either hit the subscribe button here and join us and continue in the ministries that we do through YouTube and through the, day, the Sunday worship that we have. And if you are at all able and willing to do so, hit the donate now and help to support the ministries 
that we do here at Roberts Congregational United Church of Christ. In continuing this ministry, as well as our outreach to the community and world. Go in peace, my friends. May you have a wonderful week. God bless.